One takes one. Rook to knight one. You sure you don't want to look at the board? No, just move it. Damn. I don't know how you stand all the waiting, Harry. Gives me the willies. Author and journalist Jonathan Galt is returning to court today to hear the verdict in his sensational murder trial. Galt is a self-described danger junkie who fought in Rhodesia and was later a controversial journalist in Beirut. He's charged with the murder of his third wife, model Lisa Obermeyer. What are your chances, Mr. Galt? You've got nothing to say. You've won six murder cases in a row, Mr. Galt. Yeah. Really? Well, I'm going to keep score. Yes, Come on, let's go. Are you confident? Now is, will this be number are you seven? nervous? Your guess is as good as mine. Jonathan, let's get upstairs. All rise. Be seated, please. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the state of Oregon charges Jonathan Ira Galt with the murder of Lisa Helen Galt. Have you reached a verdict? Yes, ma'am, we have. The foreman will hand the verdict to the clerk. Omitting the caption, the verdict reads, we, the jury, do find the defendant, Jonathan Ira Galt, not guilty oh, as charged in the indictment. Oh, oh, quiet, please. Quiet. The jury is excused with the court's thanks. This court stands adjourned. Oh. And who says there's no justice in the world, eh? Yeah, who said that? You show me the guy who said that. Nice job, Harry. jury might think different, but I could tell you three people here know he's guilty, you, me, and him. Come on, detective. The jury listened. They decided. How do you sleep at night, Nash? Guess you lost, detective. People of Portland lost. Oh, the jury said. I don't give a shit what the jury said. Don't print that. Just say, Detective Madsen stands by his testimony, but he accepts the will of the court or some crap like that. <laughs>
called me up this afternoon. He said he had to talk to me about something. Uh-huh. So, can I come to this party? I did. He's upstairs smoking dope with some oh. scuzz. Oh. I'm out of here. Are you gonna be all right? Don't worry about me. I'll be okay. Okay. I'll call you. Hey, Mick. It's safe to go back inside. I'm leaving. You should stay. All these people are drinking. There's bound to be a nice accident. I'm waiting for the next cliche. Is that all you're waiting for? Well, you got a mean mouth. Sue me. Sue you? Are you here with somebody? I thought I was. I was wrong. Listen, I'm starving. You want to go have dinner somewhere? No. I'd rather go back to your place.
What's your last name? I don't think that's such a good idea. Roscoe wants you to handle his appeal. You want to handle Roscoe's appeal? If you don't, speak now. Is that buddy of yours still working in the motor vehicles division? What does that have to do with Roscoe's appeal? Would you give him this and ask him to follow it through? She's a client. I lost her address. I'm getting a blonde. Am I won't? She's a redhead. I told you a hundred times, Harry, you don't give them your name. You do get theirs, just in case public health needs to be notified. You're a coarse, man. Of course I'm coarse. Thanks. Christ, it's good to be back on the street. Fresh air, no lawyers, no candy-ass lawyers telling you black is white and making it stick. We better get started. Turn left up here. Jesus, not tonight. I told the babysitter she didn't have to stay late. Nothing personal, hon. We started a crackdown today. Hey, Harry. Uh, well, you pulled the rabbit out of the hat again with coffee. I'm in the rabbit business. So what else is new? I'm giving away the store today. I need Seals' testimony, and I'll, I'll give him immunity to get it. Do I detect a crack in the rock you call a heart? I'm all heart, Nash. My case against Dixon Zacharias is weak. It's clear as hell that they shot Jesse Garth, but I need Seals' testimony to nail them. You've got till the end of the day. I'll go speak to my favorite client. Sit down, Tony. I have to ask you a few questions. I need you to tell me the truth. Can you tell me the truth, Tony? Look at me when I talk to you. Who shot Jessie down the grave you made her dig? Zach. And when she crawled out of the hole, who shot her then? Sticks. Zach, he done it first. And then Sticks asked if he could take a shot, and Zach gave the gun to him. Did you shoot at her, Tony? No. Zach said I could have a try, but I was too bummed out. Bummed out? I was tired. I see. DA's offered you a deal. If you'll testify against Styx and Zach, she'll give you complete immunity. You know what that means? No. That means you go free. That'd be okay, I guess. You know, the guys in here said I was lucky to have you as my lawyer. They said you'd beat the rap for me. There's one other thing, Tony. Uh, if you hadn't been so bummed out, you think maybe you might have taken a shot at it? Yeah, I guess. Harry? You've been avoiding me. No return phone calls. Your secretary says you're out when you're in. And all I wanted to do was to thank you. Properly and tell you about my new project. I'm not interested. Well, you will be when I've told you. I've just signed a publishing deal to write a book. What about? Us. And our battle with the hangman. You know, Jonathan, life's just too short to be having this conversation. Oh, what a shame. And I've just put you down for a share in the profits. Harry, 
There's one thing I wanted to ask you, seriously. All the time you were defending me, what did you really think? Innocent or guilty? It's none of my business. But you do want to know, don't you? Is the attorney-client privilege still in effect? All right, I'll tell you exactly what happened. Look at me, Harry. I came home that night drunk, very drunk, and very randy. But the bitch wouldn't put out, so I hit her. Have you ever hit a woman, Harry? It feels good, and they love it. They love the pain. So I hit her again, and again. And again. And then I gave her the most exquisite pain of all. I gave her death. Oh my God. Look at your face. Do you actually believe me? Oh, come on, Harry. Lisa was a real cow, but I wouldn't kill her. Come on, I was lying. You know, I really am very good with words, Harry. It's going to be a wonderful book. The trouble is, I don't have a title. Now, you like Blake, don't you? He's very good with titles. Now, what was the one? Oh, yes. Tiger, Tiger, Burning Bright. Talk too much. In the forests of the night, what immortal hand or eye could frame thy fearful symmetry? can't quit the practice. Well, I'm not going to quit. I just want to take a break for a while. You know, go fishing. Take a vacation. You hate vacations. That's why you pissed away your marriage. You never took one. I was spending all my time with the low light. They're all entitled to the best defense. It's a significant principle of Western jurisprudence based on English common law. They're entitled to a defense. They're not entitled to me. I need a break. You're burnt out. I understand. We can lighten your load. Oh, good. You'll love these. Yeah, this is uh, an arsonist. This guy's a rapist. This guy's an arsonist and a rapist. A real special guy. What the hell do you know about fishing? I see you get a pole, a line, a hook, and a worm. What else do you need to know? Galt got to you, didn't he? Galt is history. Hey, you know what I saw on television? They got this aphrodisiac for fish. It comes in a can, you spray it on the worm and the salmon go crazy. Christ, Harry, the fish are supposed to swallow the hook, not screw the bait. You gotta stay. I can't.
We've been separated for some time. A couple of days ago, I told the lawyers to start divorce proceedings. You got good timing. Did you ever think about me once? Once. I know the captain didn't think I was ready for this, but I finally wore him down. Well, what about Charlie? I wore him down the day we got married. Woo! Hey, baby, where are you going? Hi, you gorgeous. Are you busy tonight? I think Charlie really likes sleeping with a lady cop. Well, this is your corner. You take it easy. You too. Hey, sweetie, you like what you see? Hey, Pistol. girl, show doing? and tell. Oh, you look lonely, honey. You need something. Tell him what he wants to hear. Hi, honey. You want to come with me? She's mighty cool for a first night out. Yeah. She's perfect for Vice. Good cop with great legs. There's that beige Mercedes again. I think we got a fish. Got you want to have breakfast tomorrow? Good girl, you're a natural. Good luck, man. Uh, okay. It's not Jesus that easy. Christ, she's getting nervous. Uh, you, gotta, you gotta tell me what you want. Just you calm down. To go to the John side. If you don't get his pitch, there's no I arrest. I always want a good time. Go to his side, well, dummy. You know that. Go to his side. About. Don't get in. Jesus Christ, don't get in, you stupid cop! Get up, get up. I've only been in town a couple of days. I don't know my way around yet. You look like you could show me what I need to know. In the car, they took off. I lost contact. Oh, that dumb bitch. I'm in deep here, but they won't go far. How the hell did that happen? She's a rookie. What can I tell you? Exactly what it was that you saw. About my size, but I couldn't identify him. I never saw his face. It was a light brown Mercedes Benz automobile. Oh my God. Did you get a name? No. Uh uh. Is that no. He just dusted in there. Prints aren't much, but they did find some fibers. Okay, go back and check that again. I did. Check it again. Hey, wait a minute. I'm not finished with you yet. Trust me. Come over. Take a look at these tire marks. Do you know what kind? Very clear. It's foreign radio. Get a cast. Man, how you doing? My husband know you. Captain made the call himself. Can you ID him? It was the Bay's Mercedes we were watching. Early 30s. Blonde. Five foot nine. Tan jacket, gray slacks. I'll get that son of a bitch. I looked in his eyes, man. I looked in his fucking eyes. <laughs> They have a 
boat that goes up the Columbia and goes to Idaho takes about a week. What do you think? I'd love it. So what are you gonna do? I mean, after we take our voyage to Idaho. What are you gonna do? <laughs> hmm? I don't know. I've stopped thinking about that for the moment. Good. <laughs> Motor vehicles came up with some possibilities. Good. Driver's license photos. Same height. Greater Portland area. If he owns a Mercedes, he's in here. Let's him go back. One Philip Stafford. That's the son of a bitch right down to the curly blonde mop. Call Monica. Tell her to grease away with whatever judge she can work with. Search warrant for jacket, pants, knife, any other probables. Impound order for the Mercedes. Anything else? Arrest warrant. <laughs> And that's when I had it out with him about the divorce. I remember the night very well. They say that some cops saw him in the room. They say that they saw Philip in that room. They say I'm lying, that I'm covering up for him. Where the hell was your attorney? He's a divorce lawyer. He's not very good. Harry. I'm going to call Jerry Landau. He's my partner. He is very good. Well, yes, he is good. But, Harry, you're the best. Everybody knows you're the best. Philip wants you to represent him. No, no way. Harry, please. Even if he wasn't your husband, I wouldn't do it. I've quit. You know that. You quit because you were sick of defending monsters. This is different. He's not guilty. He really needs your help. Jenny. Harry, please, just talk to him, please. Would you just talk to him? For me? Harry Nash. I recognize you from your pictures. Hi, Phil. Have a seat. So we're leaving. Jenny said you'd handle this. I said I'd talk to you. I didn't say I'd take the case. How long do you think it'll take to straighten this out? Straighten this out? Philip, you're accused of murder. Yeah, but I was with my wife that night. Didn't she tell you? Why don't you tell me? First time they asked me about this, I, I didn't even know what night they were talking about. But, but I didn't say anything. I knew that much. And they said it was Monday night. It didn't mean anything to me either. Then I remember there was this one night Jenny and I, well, we had some things we needed to talk about. 
I said, please, let that be Monday night. By God, it was. Why don't you tell me what happened on Monday, let's say from 5 o'clock on? 5 o'clock, I was in the office with Mitch, who's one of our investors. I left about 7. I usually stay later, but I said I'd meet Jenny. Where? At Jake's. We had dinner. A lot of people saw us. And then uh, we went back to my place. What time? Be about 9 o'clock. We talked for a couple hours. She left a little after 11. She went back to our house. You and she were separated. Jenny's got this notion in her head about divorce. But we're going to work it out. Yeah. What are you leaving out, Philip? <laughs> I don't know, 100 details. What do you want to know? You taking the Stafford case? I think I'll let Jerry handle it. Shit, I wish you'd take it. Because I'd love to see you lose. Well? Somebody made a big mistake. He's going to be fine. I'll call Jerry. He'll go right over. He's going to be OK. A guy with a clean sheet who's innocent is not going to get convicted. They might not even get to trial. For God's sakes, he's accused of killing a police woman. It's a policeman who's accusing him. I know. And all he's got is my word against the whole goddamn police department. I know that, he but He needs it's... you, not your partner. No, listen to me. You listen to me. I, ca I can't. It's not ethical for me to take a case where I'm personally involved with a major witness. Ethical? You have let murderers go free. Now you're going to walk away from defending an innocent man? I mean, that's not ethical. That is hey, wrong. Hey, hey, that is hey, so hey, damn hey, hey. wrong. What's going on here? What's going on? You're more scared of this than he is. If something goes wrong, if he gets sent to prison, I'll have to stay by him. I'll never really be free. Have you ever lied to me? No. Have you told anyone about us? No. If I'm the attorney representing your husband, and you're the major witness testifying on his behalf, we can't be with each other. We can't be seen together. Can't touch. It's not going to be like it has been. You understand? Yes. Until it's over. You pay up front. Send a check to the office. They'll tell you how much it is. To the honor MC's dump with E. I'm some supreme apologist, you know what's Mr. MC. And I can rock the life party too, they never end. I made almost different shakes and rocks, so please, 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 See the kid rapping down there? He was in a fender bender. Mother claims he's practically in a wheelchair. It's all right to me. The staff would arrest. Look at the police report. Expert witnesses a cop. The car, the pants, the jacket. They all ID Harry. Monica's got a great hand. Maybe. Maybe not. See if you can dig up any street stuff on staff and ask around. See if he's a known John. Those girls don't kiss and tell, Harry. It only takes one. Yeah.
Good afternoon. Hmm. Is the uh, manager here? I'm it. Tropic of Cancer. You fellas ever read this man, Miller? Oh, he's a pig. He's wallowing in his own filth. I'm gonna burn it soon as I finish it. Burn it? You fellas reporters? No, I'm an attorney. I represent the accused in the Hirsch case. This is Mr. Thorpe. He's a private investigator. How do you do? Lovely girl, but I knew what she was. I gave her one of these. In him shall you find your salvation. Did the John pay for the room? Oh, no. He stayed in the car while she checked in. Can we see the room? Oh, I don't know. The police. You know. Uh... Here you go. This is uh, for the Lord's work. Hmm. Well, now, that is mighty Christian of you. She was lying there at the side of the bed. It's a judgment if I've ever seen one. Where was the other one? Oh, he was lying right here. I thought he was dead, too. Is that the only light on in here? Oh, it's the only light in here. Our customers aren't over fond of lights. Was the porch light on out here? Probably. The police report says you didn't see the killer. I did so see him. I couldn't identify him. I never saw his face. What did you see? Well, I saw his back. He was running. What do you mean you saw his back? Nothing special, though. It's ordinary. Brown hair. Brown hair? Wasn't blonde curly hair? No, sir. It's brown positive. Brown and cut straight. Are you sure it was brown? Of course I'm sure. You to drop by. How are you? Oh, I'm great. Your feet me swill. Guy in the cell next to mine howls all night. Toilet's busted. I'm fantastic. How are you? I'm sorry you're going through this. Why don't you try saying that like you mean it? You have no idea what I'm going through here! brought you some clothes for the trial. He says you should dress conservatively, like a lawyer. In fact, he says you should look like a lawyer. Who's he? Harry, your attorney. Harry, my attorney. My attorney, Harry? What do you think? Well, what did Harry think? Did he help you pick him out? Philip, what do you think? I think I'm going to look like Harry, our attorney. Put these in the locker for you. Jenny, wait a minute. I'm sorry. Just... I'm scared you're just gonna all leave me here. I'm scared to death. covering the trial for a local rag. <laughs> oh, Harry. Once my prince, now my subject. The trauma measures approximately five inches, cleanly severing the trachea, the esophagus, and the carotid artery. The larynx also suffered damage. In other words, somebody cut her throat. Yes. What sort of weapon was responsible for the trauma? Some sort of instrument with a thin, sharp metal blade. A knife? Yes. Can you describe the bleeding from such a wound? Profuse. The carotid artery, when severed, becomes a virtual fountain of blood. And would this fountain be likely to splash on the killer? Yes. Thank you. No further questions, Your Honor. Redirect? Yes, Your Honor. Dr. Nolan, where was the murderer standing when Marge Hirsch's throat was slit? 
Judging the way she fell, I would say he was behind her. And the fountain of blood, in which direction did it flow? Well, forward, of course. So it is possible that the blood did not spatter on the killer? Yes, it's possible. No further questions, Your Honor. We recovered a gray pair of slacks and a tan jacket. The pants and jacket that have been entered as exhibits five and six? Yes. No further questions, Your Honor. Mr. Nash. In your search of Mr. Stafford's apartment, did you find what Dr. Nolan described as an instrument with a thin, sharp metal blade? What? A knife? Oh, uh, yes, two of them. Where did you find them? In a drawer in the kitchen. You mean a butcher knife and a paring knife? Yes. What did you do with them? Impounded. We sent them to the lab. Why? The warrant mentioned weapons. I see. I'm curious, officer. Do you happen to have any such weapons in your home? Probably. Was it your assumption that Mr. Stafford, about to search for a woman of easy virtue, decided to take along a paring knife just in case? Objection. Argumentative. Sustained. I'll withdraw the question. No further questions, Your Honor. You've testified that the fiber found on Marge Hirsch's sweater was similar to the fibers in the tan jacket belonging to Mr. Stafford. By similar, do you mean identical? No, sir. The sample consisted of a single fiber. A thread? A fiber. A thread is made up of many fibers. So it might have come from another jacket? Yes, sir. Or another tan garment? Possibly. Officer Hirsch's sweater was Angora. Did you find any Angora fibers on Mr. Stafford's jacket? None. Did you find any evidence of blood? None. And the knives? Was there blood on the knives? Yes, sir. There was. Was it Marge Hirsch's blood? No, sir. It was animal's blood. <clears throat> From a cow. Excuse me? A cow? Blood from a cow. So what we have here is irrefutable evidence that the owner of this knife had a steak for dinner? That would be a reasonable conclusion. Mm -hmm. And in addition to the late unfortunate cow, we have a piece of lint that may or may not have come from someone's tan jacket that somehow managed to avoid a torrent of blood. Objection. Sustained. I withdraw the remark. No further questions. Redirect. No, Your Honor. This court is in adjournment until 9 o'clock tomorrow morning. Weird. It's okay. We're going after their physical evidence. But why are they laughing? It's not funny. Don't worry about it. It happens all the time. I'll see you tomorrow. Let's go, Mr. Stafford. Circuit Court today, the murder trial of Philip Stafford got underway with opening arguments from Deputy District Attorney Monica Powers and Defense Attorney Harry Nash. Stafford, a 32-year-old Portland investment advisor, is charged with the killing of policewoman Marge Hirsch. No, but they seem to be... You told me you were going to get a divorce. What are you talking about? On the other hand, I may, I may be the one who misunderstood. Your husband doesn't think so. Your lawyer isn't convinced. He says you haven't filed. Your friends say... Are you talking they... to my friends? It's in the investigator's reports. What investigator? The man I use. I use a private investigator. Why? You ask me. I'll tell you anything. You're talking about a private detective, it's aren't you? It's standard procedure. It's not where this works. What the hell do you want to ask? I have to know a lot of things, Jenny. It's the way it works. No, I didn't file. I stopped the proceedings. I couldn't do that to him. He thinks he's going to die. Anyway, you know, it's none of your damn business. Fine. Fine. I just want to know the situation. Whose situation? Mine or yours? I'm not talking about us. Yes, you are. Are you a jealous person? Not at all. You are, are my major witness. If Monica thought that you were that concerned about your husband, 
If she thought that this divorce stuff was all a lie... Then she couldn't she... very well say he was frustrated, could she? Did you sleep with him that night? Notice who his lawyer is? Nash is not on trial, Bert. He's not gonna get a chance to burn me again. Get Stafford, they'll be got a nail. You just got it all mixed up in your head. I'm gonna tie Stafford to this pimp. Then Nash is finished. Take a left up here. You got a minute? You looking for some action? I like my health too much. Hey, all my girls are clean. They've been checked out. I'll bet. Friend of yours? I don't know the dude. He don't come around here. Put your mind to it. Start remembering. Isn't he the dude that's on trial for offering the undercover cop? It's not news, DJ. I want to know what else he does. I can't get involved with no courts. Courts? There'll be a stroll in the park compared to what I'll put you through. You don't come around on this, I promise. Hey, Kermit. Did you read Dear Abby today? No, no I don't think I did today. I love, love Dear Abby. Get your hands on your head. Now, is this? Get up against the car. On, Get up against the car. Spread them. Let's go, man. Now. Get off the coast. Now. Get on the car. Get on the fucking car. Oh, bullshit. You busted my personal fucking taillight. You got a driving infraction of a serious nature. You know, I don't fuck with you. Why are you fucking with me? Hey, you do your job, I do mine. It's nothing personal. Get up against the car. Spread your legs. You got a complaint? Oh, man, what the fuck are you talking about? You thought it was the civilian review board. Fuck the review board. All right, I'm a reasonable guy. You think I got a personal beef? Detective Crosby will conduct the search. Go ahead. Just get up against the car. Jesus Christ, man. Bullshit! Well, now, Bullshit. look at this. I believe we've got a controlled substance here. Cuff this asshole, read him his rights. What about the other one? Pass, I got what I want. You have the right to remain silent. Fuck the right to remain silent. Call Silverman. Have a nice evening, Kermit. I'd say you'll do a minimum of five years hard time on this, DJ. Unless what? Like, right, what the fuck is it you want? Just tell the truth. The truth will set you free. Let's go. Shit. He's perfect. He can tie Stafford to half the whores on the strip. He'll need a grant of immunity is the only thing. OK, I'll interview him. Now listen, you put him on the stand right after me. It'll nail everything down. Bert, please, I'll talk to him. Now, Mr. Grimes, you said you got to look at the killer as he drove out of the parking lot. Yeah, but not a good look. Did you see his hair? Did he have blonde, curly hair like Mr. Stafford? Could, could he turn around? I only saw the guy from the back. Sure. Mr. Stafford, would you please stand up and turn around? Nope. Didn't look like that. Thank you, Mr. Stafford. How would you describe the killer's hair? Mm -hmm. 
Dark, thin, cut very neat. No further questions. Lead direct? Yes, Your Honor. Mr. Grimes, do you remember being questioned by Detective Crosby on the night of the murder? Oh, yeah. Did he ask you to describe the driver of the car? Sure, but I said I couldn't do it. What about the dark hair? He didn't ask. I see. How fast was the car traveling when you saw it? Burning rubber. I notice you wear very thick glasses. How well do they correct your vision? 100% of normal? 75%? 50%? Yea, though I be eyeless in Gaza and shorn of my strength, the Lord restoreth my sight and replenisheth my power. Would you be willing to submit to an eye test, Mr. Grimes? And the Lord Jesus touched their blind eyes, and they were opened. How long did you view the killer's face? Long enough to recognize him, a few seconds. A few? What do you mean by a few? Three, four? Seven or eight, I'd say. The killer stepped back into the doorway. How long did that take? A couple seconds. You heard his footstep. You turned your head to look at him. How long did that take? Maybe a second. Then it's safe to say you weren't actually looking at him for all of those seven or eight seconds. The man was Stafford. And in those three or four seconds of actual time you had to identify him, you had the presence of mind to study his jacket, study his pants and his face, all in the final moments before you passed out? A police officer is trained to be observant. And yet you were unable to get the license plate of the Mercedes? Yes. The light was out and I was too far back. By the time I got to the motel, I was moving too fast to think of it. You testified that the car you saw that night was a beige 1979 Mercedes-Benz Model 240D. Yes. How did you know the model in the year of the car? It's a car Stafford drives. Did you know the model in the year of the car the night of the murder? I saw Officer Hurst get in the car. Later in our investigation, I confirmed it. A 1979 Mercedes-Benz 240D beige. I repeat the question. Did you know the model in the year of the car the night of the murder? Yes or no? No. Thank you. Detective Matson, I have here three photographs. They're labeled Defendant's Exhibits 3, 4, 5. Would you please take a look at them and tell the jury what you see? They're all shots of a beige Mercedes-Benz. The same type of car that Philip Stafford drives? Yes. No further questions. Are you right? Yes, Your Honor. How long have you been a police officer? 15 years. And in the course of those 15 years, how many times have you been called upon to identify suspects you've observed in the act of committing a crime? Many times. How's your eyesight? I have 20-20 vision. And the man you saw in the motel room the night of the murder was Philip Stafford? It was. Philip Stafford. Your Honor, the state rests. Rest? How in the hell can she rest when she hasn't even put DJ up on the stand yet? You're her boss. She's right. Put that guy in the stand and Nash will crucify him. She's afraid of Nash? You need somebody with balls on this case. That's way out of line. You get out of here with that stuff. All right, I'm sorry. I apologize. But to quit without trying? Monica quits when she's ahead. Look, if we were desperate, I'd say, fine, call him in. We got nothing to lose. But the man is a pimp. That's 50 pounds of garbage in a 10-pound bag. All Nash has to do is kick it. We'd never get rid of the stick. Now, we've got a good case here, right now. Nash got some laughs, but we have a veteran officer here, 15 years on the force, who positively identifies Stafford as the killer. You were great. What's the matter? Son of a bitch is up to something, Michael. See ya. You take the stand tomorrow. I know. I missed you. I want to go over what Monica's likely to ask you. That's why we're here, Mrs. Stafford. Okay. You go first, right? Yeah. I'll ask you how long you've been married, how long you've been separated, whether you were with Philip on the night of the murder. Be simple, be direct, be truthful. Right. Then Monica will cross-examine you. She'll throw you a few softball questions, try to get you to loosen up, be comfortable. And then? Then she'll accuse you of lying. She'll start asking you about your sex life with your husband. That won't be much of a story. That's what she's going to want to show, that he had kinky tastes. You rebuffed him, he had to go elsewhere to get it. I mean, did he ever tie you up? Did he ever hit you, spank you? Did he have to hurt you in order to come? Did he have to do any of these things? 
Never. See, the jury's a pretty straight-ahead bunch, but they've heard of this stuff. For all anybody knows, they do it. But they're not going to approve of you talking about it in open court, so be direct. Be responsive. But it wouldn't hurt if you weren't exactly sure what Monica was asking you all the time. You can't underestimate her. I never underestimate anybody. Were you a virgin when you married your husband? What does it have to do with anything? You're under oath. You have to answer, unless I object and it's sustained. Objection. Have you ever had sex with another man? Yes. How was it? Wonderful. That's a good answer. Do I get to say that in court? You know, you are really terrible. <laughs> you know that? Mr. Nash, planning your tactics. It's very interesting watching you work, Harry, when I'm not quite so involved. I'd say the trial could possibly go either way. Care to comment? No. Oh, I'm so sorry. We're talking about your husband, aren't we? How insensitive. Excuse us. Good luck tomorrow, Mrs. Stafford. I've been a staff writer in a foreign car journal I'm specializing in European automobiles for over 20 years. I'm going to hand you State's Exhibit Number 7, which is a photo of the defendant's car. Will you please identify it for the jury? It is a Mercedes-Benz, model 240D, 1979, beige in color. Will you identify the three cars in these three photos for me? 1981, 300D. 1977, 280E, 1983, 240D. If I told you that a previous witness had described all three of those cars as being of the same type as the defendant's car, would you be surprised? No. From 1977 to 1985, they made three models that were almost identical, minor differences only. And what was the most popular color of those three models? Beige. Would you tell the jury how many of those jackets your company has distributed nationally? In the last year, about 60,000 in the tan alone. That's 5,000 dozen. To the best of your knowledge, do any of your competitors make a similar jacket? Many. We have many imitators. But this is our emblem. That looks like a real nice emblem. But I bet you can't really see it from a distance of more than a few feet. Yes, it's rather small, but in our view, Anything larger would be in poor taste. Mrs. Stafford, in the months before and after the breakup of your marriage, did you have sexual relations with your husband? Before, not after. Did Mr. Stafford wish you to engage in s and M? I don't understand. I think you do. Objection. Withdrawn. Did he ever wish to tie you up, beat you, or in any other way uh, humiliate you during sex? Philip is a loving and gentle person. What you're describing was never a part of our life. A loving, gentle person. <coughs> and you would lie to protect him. Isn't that so? No. There's a time when I might have. I'm divorcing Philip. I don't feel the need to protect him. So you've protected him in the past? Yes. He's been in trouble before. No, he, um... Philip is a victim. Things happen to him, accidents. Uh... And you have protected him by lying, haven't you, Mrs. Stafford? Each time he got into trouble, you were there to lie, cheat, do no, whatever was necessary to save him. With the witness. 
Aren't you lying right now, Mrs. Stafford, to the jury, to, to all of us? No, I was with Philip that night. He's Isn't innocent. the simple truth of the matter that Philip Stafford had desires that you found repugnant? No. And he had to go elsewhere to satisfy no. them, to prostitutes who would do what no. you wouldn't. Isn't no. that true? That's not true. It must be true. Objection. Counsel is arguing and badgering the witness. No further questions, Your Honor. Fifteen minute recess. Would you tell the jury what your assignment was when I hired you? I was to photograph inside the motel room showing what Detective Matson would have seen on the night of the murder. I hired an individual the same height as Mr. Stafford and placed him in the position of the killer. I set my camera at Detective Matson's eye level as related in his report. And I made certain the lighting conditions were the same as he described. I'm going to hand you a photograph and ask you to identify it. Yes, sir, this is the photo I took in the motel room. What does it portray? A man standing near the door of the motel room. And can you see his face? No, sir, you cannot. Objection, these pictures have not been entered into evidence. Sustained. Show the picture to the prosecutor. And move that it be entered into evidence. Your Honor, we move that Defendant's Exhibit 9 be admitted as evidence. An expert photographer like you could probably photograph any scene ten different times under the identical lighting conditions and come out with ten significantly different photographs. Am I right? Well, yes, I guess. If you used high-speed lenses or fast film stock, you'd get a different look. The truth is that what the camera sees and what the human eye sees are not necessarily the same thing. Is that a question? No, it's a statement. No further questions. Mr. Nash? Permission to approach the bench, Your Honor. Permission granted. Your Honor, since the state has opened the door by raising the issue of whether the human eye can see under such circumstances, we would like to offer the court a demonstration. I object to the demonstration. Well, after all, Mrs. Powers, you opened the door. So you may proceed, Mr. Nash. There was a neon light shining through the open door, according to Detective Matson. There was a single 60-watt bulb hanging outside the door. You are a police officer who's been giving chase. You're out of breath. You're worried and you're frightened, as any of us would be. You burst into a dark room like this, you see your partner lying dead on the floor, her throat cut. You are hit over the head so violently that you fall to the ground, and a moment before you lose consciousness, you hear a noise. Turn your head and see a man. Or is it a woman? Young, old, black, white. Is there reasonable doubt? Lights! Thank you. After Mr. and Mrs. Stafford had dinner at Jake's, Mrs. Stafford went to a movie. Where did Mr. Stafford go? I was at home. I had no alibi. All anybody ever does around here is lie to me. How the hell am I supposed to defend you? Apparently by screwing Mrs. Stafford. 
I know it. I see the way she looks at you in court. Now, you're supposed to back down on me. I get convicted, you get Jenny. Listen, I'll save you the trouble. You can't have her. I don't care about your accusations. I'm only interested in one thing. Did you do it? No! How the hell am I supposed to believe that? I don't give a fuck if you believe me. I want to tell you this. You abandoned me on this, and I will blow the whistle so loud it'll blow you right off the fucking bar. Get me out of here! So what's going on here? Mrs. Stafford committed perjury. I bet. She wasn't with him when she said she was. It's not bad as far as lies go, but if I report it, he's going to get convicted. I don't think I want to hear this. Yeah, I know you don't, but there's more to it. Jenny and I... Jesus Christ, you're banging a major well, witness in a case you're trying? The wife of your client? who also happens to be committing perjury? Well, he's a liar, but he's innocent. I didn't hear it. I know nothing. Why the hell didn't you go fishing? They're taking Seals to arraignment. He was arrested trying to dispose of the evidence. He raped and dismembered a 14-year-old girl. You do solemnly swear the testimony you're about to give shall be the truth and nothing but the truth, so help you God. I do. Be seated. Mr. Stafford, I'm going to ask you some very simple questions, and I would like simple, honest, and direct answers. Where were you on the night of September 15th? I was at home with my wife. Have you ever solicited the services of a prostitute? N no. Did you kill Marjorie Hirsch? No, I did not. No further questions. Mrs. Powers? I have no questions, Your Honor. You may step down. Mr. Nash. The defense rests, Your Honor. Are you prepared to argue? No, Your Honor. The state has a rebuttal witness. Very well. The state calls Eli Johnson. Who's Eli Johnson? Mr. Johnson was not on the state's witness list. I request a brief recess so I can talk to my client. Granted. The court will recess for one hour. Who the hell is this guy? Hmm? He's a pimp. How do you know me? Hmm? How do you know me? I acted with a couple of hookers. I never killed anybody. I would break your fucking neck. You know it! I didn't Don't know! Don't lie to me! I didn't know! You knew he killed Hirsch, too. He slit her throat, he ran to you for help, and you gave him a goddamn alibi. I gave him an alibi because I know he didn't do it. Lady, that man has guilt written all over him. You got complicity on you! Why? Because some pimp is on the stand? You can destroy that guy in a minute. Nobody's gonna believe him. Maybe I'll believe him. Maybe I want to believe him. Your duty is to defend him. Hands off me! quiet! It doesn't matter what you think of him or me. You owe him the best defense possible, and you know it. If you're lying again, I'll bury the both of you. I didn't know. And would you tell the court what your occupation is? Uh, well, you might say that, uh, I manage women. You mean you're a pimp? Mrs. Powers, you are asking a witness to admit criminal activity. Mr. Johnson is testifying under a grant of immunity, Your Honor. Very well. 
Proceed. Mr. Johnson, have you ever seen Philip Stafford, the defendant in this case, before? Oh, yeah. We old friends and enemies. He'd like to open up a charge account with me. How would you characterize his patronage? He'd like to come down and start trouble. By trouble, are you referring to his sexual tastes? Objection. Overruled. Proceed. He'd like to beat on the girls. He got off on it. Would you please define got off on it for the jury? Objection. Your Honor, I am trying to show that Philip Stafford had unusual sexual desires. It is central to an understanding of the case. Proceed. He got a sexual thrill out of beating on the girls. I mean, that's the way he got off. You know, instead of uh, what you and I would call the regular way. <laughs> <laughs> and what were the results of this desire for violence? Well, he'd get into a beef with a couple of the girls. And so one time, a couple of them started beating back on him. Well, it got so bad, his old lady had to come down and pick him up, shake him off, and take him home. Is the woman that you refer to as his old lady in this courtroom? Yes, yeah, the bitch over there in the black dress. You know, I warned her that this, uh, this boy, he needed some help. She said to me, I know it, I know it. You know, I felt sorry for the bra. Thank you. You're welcome. Your witness. Your witness, Mr. Nash. Seated. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury, the state of Oregon charges Philip Stafford with the murder of Marjorie Hirsch. Have you reviewed the evidence presented here, and have you reached a fair and impartial verdict? Yes, sir. And how do you find? We find Philip Stafford guilty as charged. Christ, Harry, when the hell are you going to get the goddamn lock fixed? How's the cold? Oh, uh, it's a little better. Good. Thank you. Because I'm tired of being your goddamn mailman. When are you coming back to work? I'm about to be disbarred. They can't do that, Harry. Sure they can. Stafford's got himself a new lawyer. He's going for a new trial on the grounds of incompetence of counsel. And he's filed a complaint with the bar charging me with conflict of interest. He's got a hell of a case. <laughs> As you well know, we'll fight it. You have to fight it. I do. 
He was guilty of sin. And she used you. I'll call you tomorrow. Hey, get better. Thanks. They're going to ask you to tell about us. They already have. Tell them the truth. That's what I'm going to do. Then I'll tell them. I'm taking it on except for me. I'll tell them you never would have defended him if you'd known how self-destructive he was. It should have been up to me. I knew something was happening to him. I knew it was sick. But that time when I went to pick him up, I didn't believe the pimp. I thought one of the women might have tried to rob him. But when that pimp was on the stand, I had to believe it. I guess I've been lying to myself most of all. You still think he's innocent? Yes. I don't know. Uh, maybe if I... Let's not do that to each other. Thanks for coming. Hey, Mick. Take it easy. How are you, Mr. Johnson? Fine, and yourself, Mr. Nash? I'm not too bad. I'd like to ask you a couple questions. It's a little late for that, isn't it? How the hell did the DA's office get you to testify? They pay you? What are you, a comedian? Hell no, they didn't pay me. Madsen stuck his hand in my pocket and came up with an ounce of cocaine. That wasn't there. You dig? You know, if you'd have been my witness, you better believe that would have paid you well. And the only thing I would have insisted on is that you tell me the truth. I told the truth. But did you tell the whole truth? Ask. Come on, man. Ask your question. How bad was Stafford? I really didn't know Stafford. That time when I called his old lady, he had gotten into a beef between him and one of my women. I stood with my woman. Now, I don't know if he off that bitch or not. I really don't know. But you could ask me that and call it for free. 
but you fell apart. It's gonna be hard on your boy. That's it? That's it, Mr. Nash. Thanks. Yeah, thanks for nothing. Right. Yo, Nash! How was it that you kept that famous guy out of the Stafford case? Now that was slick. What famous guy? The dude who killed his wife. The Englishman. Stafford's buddy. Stafford's buddy? Yeah, Jonathan Galt. You didn't know that? He and Stafford prowl around together. Yo, Nash. What kind of lawyer are you? It was you. All the time, it was you. You're trespassing, Harry. 
You broke into my house. I think I should consult my attorney about this. The car, the clothes. A car like many other people's car. And how many jackets? Five thousand dozen? My God, you made a bloody mess of this, haven't you? How the hell could they have mistaken you for Stafford? All right. I'll answer any question my attorney asks. You are still my attorney, aren't you? I want to know the truth. Well, that's your weakness, Harry, if I may say so. Harry? You see? A simple mistake. Excuse me. What about the car? Are you going to burn that too? Well, I'm afraid it will have to be stolen. If this was bare root, I could count on a bomb, but it's Portland. You have to be a little bit more ingenious if you want to get rid of something. It's a nice car, isn't it? I haven't had it long. It was a present to myself after my trial. I'd always liked Stafford's car, you see. You're going to still have to deal with me. You? Now, come on, Harry. I would have told you that Stafford was innocent. But the last time I told you a secret, you didn't like it. You made me very uneasy. So uneasy, in fact, that I went to another lawyer to ask him about attorney-client privilege. I was very relieved to discover that the rule is absolute. Whatever one says in confidence to one's attorney is thereafter inadmissible evidence. He spoke of the poison tree. And that any evidence of wrongdoing derived from that relationship is the fruit of the poisoned tree. You'll just have to live with the fact that though you know everything, there is absolutely nothing you can do about it. Do sit down. Philip and I were friends. Oh, I suppose I furthered his education. He'd never had a whore. But he's rather like me. He likes the rough stuff. The difference is, he's afraid of it. And we drifted apart. You wanted to blame it on him. Maybe. I needed some sort of disguise. Because I knew what I wanted that night. I wanted to do it again. That's all. That's insanity. Yes, I suppose it is. If something happens, shall we make that my defense? You think you're safe from me? I believe so. But you're the lawyer. trying to get you disbarred, which is ironic given you finally did something right for a change. I was wrong. 
We were both wrong. Spare me your regrets, Nash. Eleven days after being acquitted of homicide and the death of his wife, Jonathan Ira Galt hopped in his new beige Mercedes, put on a blonde wig, and went out looking for a whore to kill. Why the wig? I don't know, maybe he figured whores read papers, too. Why a blonde wig? He had some kind of grudge against one Philip Stafford, who had been his good buddy, if we'd only known. He framed him. Jesus, how do you know? Because he just told me, because he thinks I'm his lawyer. And I just broke every rule in the book by telling you. <sighs> Shit. What am I supposed to do with this? Well, legally speaking, he's got me. I think he's got us all. It's a gray area, but I tell you one thing, if I was his attorney, I could probably keep him out of jail for the rest of his life. He did keep him out of jail, Nash. He's on some kind of edge. If we can just prod him, push him, rattle his cage a little bit, I think he might make a mistake. Yeah, he might even go after his lawyer, who now knows too much. You don't think he trusts me? If he trusts you, Nash, what are you doing here? I don't know. I'm not talking to you. Be careful. You got a gun? I got a shotgun, yeah, it was a gift. I'll take my back up. You going home? Yeah, I, uh, I got some things to do. Personal matter. Hello, Mrs. Stafford. Do you remember me, Jonathan Gold? Hello? Harry, you might as well come over. Jenny's having a party.
You betrayed me, Harry. Let her go. I underestimated you. You're even nastier than I thought. She's got nothing to do with this. You'd put a bent cop in my life, is that it? Nice move, Harry. That chap will shoot me for running a red light. Oh, but your hands are clean, aren't they? Hypocrite, liar, adulterer. Well, they do say never trust a lawyer. I know. Murder, suicide. Shady lawyer kills mistress, then self. Wronged husband mourns in jail. Come on, Pierre. Come on, Harry! I'll let you say goodbye. Very well. I'm quite a good shot, you know. I can hit her from here. Watch. <laughs> Missed. Now, Jonathan. Get back, Harry. Just get back. What the hell are you gonna do now, buddy? Huh? He's coming in there now. The cop coming to the front door. What are you gonna do? Huh? He's down there. Just hurry. He's down there. How does this fit into your murder suicide scheme? Turn around. I just have to hire a wily young lawyer like yourself, Harry. I'll buy a pack of psychiatrists. Tell them I trusted you. That'll prove my insanity beyond any reasonable doubt. You're gonna have to shoot me, Harry. Will be part of my defense. Shut up. Actually, I wish you would, my old mate. I don't much fancy staying alive. Hospital, painting classes, taking up the Bible to show I'm reborn. Anyhow, this hurts like bloody hell. Get back upstairs. Look at you. You really want to. The real Harry at last. Not a lawyer, a judge, a god deciding life and death. Harry the Omnipotent. Shut up. One last prayer, Harry. If you're gonna kill me, one last prayer. Harry is my shepherd. I shall not want. Yea, even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of... After he regained consciousness, did he say anything, Mr. Nash? Yes. What did he say? He said he would plead insanity for the killing of Detective Matson. He said I could either shoot him or defend him in court. Did he say anything else? He kept talking, yes. Talking about what? He made a reference to my role as his attorney. 
Could you repeat his exact words? Objection. It's irrelevant. Overruled. The witness may answer. Please, repeat his exact words then, Mr. Nash. He said, Harry is my shepherd. I shall not want. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil, for Harry is with me. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of Harry Nash forever. Now, Mr. Nash, in your opinion, are those the words of a sane person? Objection. The witness is not competent to judge. Overruled. The witness may answer if he has an opinion. Well, Mr. Nash, in your opinion, are those the words of a sane person? I don't know. No further questions. The witness may step down. Council may call the next witness. Galt's had it. It's all over. What do you say we take a walk? <laughs> 